This is Manaus. It is the seventh largest city in Brazil, but you can't drive here from the rest of Brazil. That's because Manaus lies directly on the Amazon, disputably the longest river in the world and the longest river without a single bridge crossing it. Yes, there is a bridge right here, but that crosses the Rio Negro, not the Amazon. So if you want to get from this city of 2 million to the rest of Brazil, you have to take a ferry. So why does such a massive city even exist in such a remote area? And how exactly did it grow to become so large while being so isolated? Manaus is a city located at the confluence of the Rio Negro and the Amazon, the capital and by far largest city in the state of Amazonas. The largest of Brazil's 26 states at about the size of Mongolia, but with a population roughly equivalent to that of Espirito Santo. I sort of like to think of it as Brazil's Alaska, but warm. The closest major cities to Manaus are all several hundred kilometers away, and the closest cities with over a million people are well over a thousand kilometers away. In fact, it's literally closer to France than it is to any cities comparable to its size. The Portuguese would establish a fort in the area in 1669 by the name of this, securing their colonial ambitions in the area against the Dutch, who had already set up shop in the area we now call Suriname. The fort would continue to serve this role for the next hundred years, until this portion of the Amazon was very much Portugal's, by which time a large community had grown around the fortress. The area would eventually be elevated to the status of a town by 1832, and 24 years after that, the town was given the name Manaus, after the local Manau people, an Arawak tribe whose name is said to mean Mother of the Gods. Whether it was currently being spelled with a U or with an O, and an accent over the second day, this place continued to be little more than a small town near the banks of the Amazon, until the late 19th century, when the rest of the world suddenly got a taste for rubber. The rubber boom saw Manaus grow from 30,000 people in the 1870s to nearly 180,000 by 1920 by which time the rubber boom had started to die down, although demand would briefly pick back up in the 1940s for no particular reason. However, this economic miracle for the city meant many local indigenous peoples would end up enslaved on the plantations, often beaten or even killed if they didn't harvest enough latex. To this day, many of the uncontacted tribes of the Amazon are in fact descendants of many of the slaves who worked the plantations during the rubber boom. Yet still, Manaus remained isolated from the Brazilian core by road. Logistically though, that doesn't actually matter too much for the city, as commercial ocean liners can navigate the Amazon all the way up to Manaus. While a big grandiose bridge across the Rio Negro was opened in 2011, the Amazon still remains the longest river in the world without a single bridge crossing it. This means that Highway BR319, whose route takes it from downtown Manaus to Porto Velho in Rondonia, has a small gap as it crosses the Amazon where vehicles have to take a ferry, which actually kind of looks more like a small barge. Now that doesn't mean Manaus is completely isolated by road, as BR-174 extends north out of Manaus, where you can drive all the way up to the Venezuelan border. In fact, actually, it is technically possible to drive from Manaus to the Brazilian core without taking a ferry. You just have to leave Brazil and then take the long way through Venezuela and Colombia and Peru before re-entering Brazil through a state that doesn't actually exist. But in and around Manaus, the Amazon is the highway, particularly as the Amazon and Rio Negro are dotted with communities of all sizes, many of which are only accessible by boat. I mean, the area literally has gas stations for boats, which, okay, actually that's kind of a common thing around the world, but I, I thought it was interesting. While the region's reliance on rubber exports have declined, the cash crops nowadays include Brazil nuts, acai, and cupuaçu which, given the other two, seems kind overdue for some wellness blog to tout it as the next secret cure for cancer or whatever gives them the clicks. Meanwhile, nowadays, fishing, soap manufacturing, petroleum refining, and chemical manufacturing have become the main industries of the region. And with a healthy dose of federal investments and tax incentives, the area has grown to become a major industrial center, with companies like Honda, Samsung, Siemens, Essilor, and LG establishing major manufacturing plants in the city. Manaus has therefore become the sixth largest economy in Brazil which actually kind of makes sense given it's actually going to become the seventh largest city in the country, and as such has become the main processing hub for raw goods coming in from the Amazon, and all the fields and pastures that much of the rainforest has been cleared out for. The expansion of Manaus and its industries inevitably led to the city growing into the Amazon rainforest all around it. With an ever-growing population, limited room for expansion, and poor government management, many in the city live in informal housing, known in Brazil as favelas, which have gradually grown into the rainforest. 
and without much in the way of proper waste management or sewage treatment in these areas, many of the waterways that feed into the Rio Negro, known locally as Igatapes, have become badly polluted. Poor government management alongside a chronic housing shortage within the city has meant that much of this illegal expansion is done by organized crime groups, such as the Northern Family, who have established control over much of the city. While a series of reforms in the late 19th century under Governor Eduardo Ribeiro reworked much of the city, the fact that Manaus became a city basically just because a bunch of people moved within the vicinity of a Portuguese fortress two to three hundred years ago means that the city wasn't exactly planned out well, and indeed part of Ribeiro's reforms meant taking the working population of the city and basically just shoving them out to the fringes. So while having a bridge across the Amazon might sound like a problem for Manaus, Really, whether or not it truly is a problem for locals, I can also think of several other problems the city might want to get out of the way first. 